The pelvis and the head have a structural relationship. They are connected through the spine and also the muscles and the fascia along the spine as well as the nervous system. Because they are in a relationship, they influence one another for better or worse say in a postural pattern where the pelvis and the head are shifted relative to one another, it's very hard to find balance in the pelvis or ease in the neck. By aligning the pelvis, we can bring ease to the neck or by aligning the head, we can bring a more optimal or assist a more optimal alignment in the pelvis. And that is what I would like to explore with you on the floor and <laughs> mainly focusing on the neck and then just bringing in the pelvis to find that alignment or that connection, that optimal connection between the two. You can join me on the mat, start in a sitting position and then roll down onto the floor. You can slide your legs slightly with you until you are lying on your back. And then place your legs about hip distance apart, the knees definitely need to be bent. And then you can use a soft ball that has the right size for your body. So you can rest the back of your head on the ball without feeling that your head is pushed forward. Now the ball is right on the edge of the base of your head there, of your skull. And then you just let your head rest for a moment. Let the weight of the bones sink into the ball. A very common pattern we have, especially when we are stressed, is head forward. So I want to go into that pattern first. You are looking up towards the ceiling. It's like an upward nodding motion. Going into a common pattern. And then by nodding down, you are going or you are moving out of the pattern. And then very slightly pressing the back of the head into the bowl. And then you release. So let's do this again. You are going into a common pattern extension in the neck and then upper neck and then you are moving out of the pattern with a slight nodding motion opening the space underneath the edge of the skull really important to feel balanced in your spine and then you press the back of your head lightly into the bowl and release the pressure let's do this a couple more times and then add in the pelvis so moving into a pattern to move out of the pattern and then reset, engage the muscles that stabilize the head on top of the spine and release. First, a softening of the neck extensor muscles, a very gentle engagement of deep neck flexors with the nodding, an engaging of deep neck extensor muscles that balance the head on top of the spine when we stand, and then you can release. Now stay in this slight nodding position and just tilt the pelvis back so your lower back is melting into the floor and then center the pelvis. Let's do this one more time. So tilting the pelvis back, let your lower back melt into the floor and now you are in <laughs> two flexions, two openings in your spine and one is in the very top of your neck, so your upper cervical spine and one is in your lower back. So you're opening these channels for fluid flow there in your spinal cord and then center the pelvis and relax your head. So it's just in its most comfortable alignment. And then you can remove the ball from below your head let your head rest on the floor, keep your pelvis centered, take one leg up off the floor into a tabletop position, take your other leg up into a tabletop position, hold on to the legs and then curl up, press your legs into the hands and roll up into a sitting position, elongating your spine. It's a really nice exercise to recreate balance between the pelvis and the head because you are so well supported on the floor. The ball gives you very nice feedback of those small movements of your head and your neck and then you can connect them again. Pelvis, head connected 
with the spine in an optimal alignment to finish. And then save that sensation on the floor, take it into an upright sitting position like we are sitting right now, or you take it up into a standing position, connecting the pelvis and the head, rebalancing. If you'd like to learn more about functional anatomy, you can join me in the online anatomy course, Anatomy 201, at yogajournal.com.